My name is my name is Talaran Taldarian, but you can call me Tal if that makes any sense. Uh, please give me an X in the class.e slash uni channel if you can hear me all right. Excellent. Thank you very much. So what we're going through today is Kaldari ships, the T1 class of ships. Um, as with any class, I'll try to be your teacher and your guide. I've been through a few of these ship classes for other ships, uh, not the Kaldari one myself. I've listened to some back recordings, but I fly Kaldari as my starting race, and I love their ships. Um, having said that, I'll try to be a little less altruistic and a little less nationalistic about flying Kaldari and I'll try to give you a bit of a heads up in a general way so that you can start flying Kaldari ships or blowing them up if you like <laughs> as we've said before. If you have any questions during the class please use the class.e slash uni channel to post them. Please start any question with a Q uh, and a double period so that I can pick them out real easy. I'll be navigating through a few windows, so if I miss one, please post it again, uh, and I'll certainly get to it. You don't have to save them up till the end of class. Just post them whenever you have them. Um, also, I'm going to post you a couple of links. Just hold on. first link is the slideshow. It's a Google document. You can open it if you have a Google account. And I'll give you a minute if you uh, want to look it up or even if you can make an account. You can download the file to your PC if that helps you any. Second file is a little cheat sheet I made for Kaldari fitting. The class is on Kaldari ships uh, both of milk. Kaldari ships 101s so are the T1 ships of the Kaldari race. Last link is an updated syllabus on this class, which I'll be using sort of as my guide. If you want to read along with what I say or look any things up back after the class, you can use that last link. Perfect. So, using that first link, I'm going to ask you to open up the slideshow to its first page. It will have a nice black background with the EVE University logo and the Kaldari Ships 101 header. Please X up in class.euni if you can't open that file. Well, you can certainly go to Bed Bowl of Milk if you like, but otherwise <laughs> stick around and learn how you can blow us up. Alyssa Beckett, you have problems opening the Google file. Do you have a Google account for email or something? But you still can't open it for some reason? Ah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's opened the page and it's black, but it says, wow, this file is really popular. Some tools might be unavailable until the crowd clears, try again or dismiss. All right. Let's see if I can shut my own copy. Maybe that'll Never help mind. You. It's all right. Don't worry. Oh, at least you have the links. You can pick it up later. Yeah. But the presentation is filled with spiffy pictures of our beautiful Kadar ship, so that's why it might take a little time. All right, class. Well, on the first page, if you can view with me just the Kaldari ship's intro and a quote. There should be no doubt in the strength of Kaldari spirit, nor in the fact that when one blow has been struck, others are going to follow. 
In my view, Kaldari ships are just that, packing a punch to her enemy, hoping to do a lot of DPS, looking to scare the enemy with one big punch and the ones following. Let us navigate to page two of the presentation. I'll give you a short overview on what we'll be dealing with in the class. First up, I'll discuss with you some general Kaldari ship characteristics, some things that most Kaldari ships have in common, which you can learn about, uh, before flying and fitting your Kaldari ships. Then we'll discuss all the Tech 1 subcapital ships in a short overview. You can ask any questions to any of the different hulls that you like. During the end, or close to the end of the presentation, I'll be discussing basic skills valuable to any Kaldari pilot, um, mostly the skills you need for fitting and flying the ships better. And we can end with a general Q&A if you'd like, uh, bringing anything to the table that we haven't discussed before. Moving over to page three of the presentation, General Kaldari Traits. What you can see on this sheet is basically the simplest of setups for any Kaldari pilot. Generally, Kaldari ships are a little slower than our counterparts from other races, but we have a high CPU level and a generally lower power grid level. So it will be difficult to fit Kaldari ships considering its lower power grid, but modules that pick up a higher CPU are generally easier to fit. Kaldari ships usually have smaller drone bays compared to others, especially Galente and other ship classes or ship races, but we have usually a lot of long-range bonuses, so we can hit you from a very far away. Kaldari ships are recognized by having missile weapons, missile launcher turrets, rockets and other types of missiles, and hybrid turrets for weapons. It makes it a little difficult for any starting up Kaldari pilot because there's not one general weapon of choice, but there can be two, even from the frigate class up. Yeah, your basic starting frigates can already have a choice of missiles or hybrids, so you'd have to cross train a little or choose one and make that your specialty. Your racial E-War type, so the electronic warfare type that Kaldari favors, ECM, electronic countermeasures, which allows you to nullify the targeting or tracking of any other ships. ECM is very specific in that way as a racial type, and Kaldari ships have a lot of bonus to it. Last point, Kaldari ships are most known for their great PvE, uh, way of thinking. I mean, I think that most people, if they would name any Kaldari ship, it would be a Kaldari Raven, which is very familiar level 4 mission running ship, but the other Kaldari ships, due to having missiles, are very famous for PvE. Why is this? First of all, long range, you can take off those uh, pirates or those PvE baddies from a long distance, and run through a mission smoothly without taking much damage. Also, because you can exchange missiles in damage type at will with the four different damage types you can really line up to kill any one uh, of your mission foes easily because they usually have one or two general weaknesses in running missions well, Solus Ghost you're joining us just now I've been here, just got into the channel, got it working. All right, all right. Do you have the links, or can can somebody repost the links for you? If you would, it would be perfect. We're now going to slide four. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Lacknear. On slide four, typical Kodari weapon systems, we'll be discussing the two different systems. Slide four starts us off with missiles. I absolutely love missiles, and they have a lot of advantages for us that we'll discuss, and perhaps some disadvantages too. Uh, any type of damage is possible to be done with missiles, which, as we discussed just now, is great for PvE. You can choose the type of damage that your enemies have a weakness to. Um, reloading missile systems takes a little longer, 10 seconds on usual weapons. For lasers, that could be much quicker, so that's a difference we have with laser turrets. But still, you can exchange them at any time, 10 seconds. In a PvE setup, that would be pretty good time to make, I think. And you can exchange them in between missions, which is more likely. 
Missile turrets do not require capacitor to fire, which means that if you have spent your cap on anything, your missiles will still keep firing towards your enemy, which is great, and especially in the situations where you're drained or nuded, your missiles will still deal their damage. I personally find missiles easy to use, but that's probably because I think math is evil. Uh, math is on my personal axis of evil. I really can't be bothered much by it. And when I listen to people who know a lot about turrets and doing turret damage, there is velocities and angulars and, and spiraling and all sorts of difficulty. And with missiles, I point and shoot. It's even possible when using missiles to use the FOF missiles, which are auto-targeting, which means that even when I'm in some sort of e-war nastiness and I can't target or track an enemy, I can still shoot at it with my missiles. So that's a pretty good advantage there. Missiles do have some disadvantages. The damage of missiles can be reduced by target size and speed. To go into it a little here, but we'll talk about it a little later in the class. Missiles, especially the larger ones, require a larger signature radius to do any damage. Damage can be reduced by firing a larger missile at a smaller ship. So we use light missiles and rockets for our smaller ships. We use the larger missile types. We can hit larger ships and do much more damage. But if you'd fire heavy missiles or even cruise missiles or torpedoes towards frigates, you'll be doing a lot less damage than with any other weapon type. Also, which is a PvP issue, possibly, missiles take some time to get to their target, especially if we fire them over long range in our sniping rolls, missiles will take time to get to their target and do damage. Other uh, weapon systems do damage much more instantly, much more quickly, which in PvP can be a problem if your target is moving around quick, warping out, your missiles will take a longer time to do damage. It's also possible in a smaller gang or fleet setup that you fire at a primary, your missiles get there and the primary is already gone and you've wasted some valuable DPS which could have been aimed at another target. Now just to add a bit of a personal note here, I hear a lot of people talking about how missiles are crap in PvP. I've tried my hand at PvP the last few months. I haven't been in E very long, but I love PvP. I've done some solo and in fleets and small gangs. And a lot of the times I've actually been shot down by missiles when I'm trying my hand on other race ships or other weapons because people tell me missiles are bad, which sort of made me think about how missiles work in PvP. And I think they can be a very valuable weapon type in PvP. Don't get me wrong, you have to look at your pros and cons and your, your situation. Missiles can be a great weapon in any situation. Moving on to slide number five, if you will, hybrid turrets. The second Kaldari favored weapon system is the hybrid turret, which comes in two shapes and sizes, blasters for short range, higher DPS, and rail guns for longer range, potentially lower and even the lowest DPS of all other turret types, potentially. Again, finding out which ammo or which ship bonus you use. Uh, our ships, the Kaldari ships, usually have a bonus on range. So rail guns are often used, but even with a good range bonus, you can use blasters, normally a brawling weapon, in some sort of a sniper type fit for our larger ships. More on that later when we get to those hulls. Hybrid turrets always do kinetic and thermal damage. They use up some capacitor to fire, which is different from our missile weapons. Uh, ammunition is on a sliding scale, which means you can choose your ammo type, ranging between a very short range ammo type with a higher damage and a lower damage type with a longer range. Again, finding out the difference between using blasters rails with your different ammo types. For your situation, it gives you a hell of a lot of choices, but I'm sure you can make something work if you figure them out. Yeah, that's really nice of me to say, figure out. Most situations I've been in so far in PvP, I try to use the lowest range bonus, ammo, and try to get to the highest DPS possible to knock out that enemy as quick as I can.
Um, usually using blasters and railguns to get most effective damage, you'd want to use T2 ammo. It costs you a little more, but especially in a PvP surrounding, it definitely pays out. Yeah, antimatter is definitely the most common T1 ammo. For T2, you can think about using for blasters void or null ammunition. For railguns, javelin or spike ammo. Kaldari Navy antimatter, yeah, that's a good uh, heavy damage ammo right there. Uh, Alyssa Beckett, you have a question. What's your preferred configuration for PvP? That's a really tough question, and it really differs on the situation and the ship. Can I tell you, can I park your question a little and answer it a little later on? We'll talk about sure, it sure. more. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll definitely get back. And thank you, Lechner and Katu, for linking up some of these ammo types. I'd like to move on to slide number six, talk about ECM a little bit. ECM is the Kaldari E-War uh, method. ECM, Electronic Countermeasures, are a chance-based E-War module. Either you succeed or you fail in using them, which can sometimes be a bit of a bummer, but a well-fit ship can definitely have very much use of ECM. Uh, I did some sparring in frigates the other day with uh, a fellow mentee of mine, uh, so a fellow pilot who has the same mentor as I have, and uh, he flew uh, an ECM frigate, and there's just not much I can do against it. It's, he had it fit perfectly. And then ECM is a very, very powerful method uh, of using. Uh, ECM, compared to other eboard mods, requires a lot of attention to manage properly. You need to uh, put in uh, the right ECM type for the right enemy, uh, fighting the different kinds of radar, LADAR, gravimetric, um, and what's that other type? Somebody help me out. Magnetometric. Magnetometric, thank you very much. A lot of specific ECM E warships who don't know what they'll be encountering will have a range of these. Most fleet compositions that I've seen um, think that ECM is great. Uh, yesterday um, or earlier today, depends on which time zone you're at, I flew in uh, the fleet with the James. Uh, um, is it Art? Art, Art Gar, James, who's running for CSM, check it out on the forums. <laughs> You'll see him in uh, uh, in his uh, color in his event uh, for Fleet. Argot, thank you very much, uh, Ron. That's that's his name. There's too much information coming my way, man. And he completely loves ECM in fleets. And he said a number of times that in the past, EUni fleets used to black out the sun with their Blackbirds, uh, a great Kaldari Ewar cruiser. We'll definitely get to that later. Celadorus, let me see. I, perhaps I made a typo. Uh, um, yeah, you're actually right. Uh, the prevention is for a cycle, but the cycle can be continuous unless a situation prevents it. But you're right, yeah, the jam will continue going on as long as the module cycles. Uh, of course, the, uh, something that can break a cycle at the end of the cycle is range. If your range changes towards your enemy, then you might break uh, up uh, after one module cycle. But yeah, the module's on, you'll keep on going. Losing cap could also break your, uh, your, uh, your jamming, for instance. Oh, thank you, Katu, for linking up these ECM mods, the different ones. Thank you very much. I'm a bit of a derp when it comes to ECM, so thank you for sharing those with us. I'll definitely add them to the syllabus later on. ECM, according to some of the more experienced pilots, is a good role for any new pilot in the uni war fleets to take. Any fleet can do well with a good ECM. Uh, it's something that takes a little bit of practice. Um, and sometimes uh, one of the negatives it can deter other pilots from fighting you if they see that you have some ECM in your fleet or you're doing small roams or solo with an ECM ship other pilots will just be annoyed because they can't target you they can't track you they can't do you any damage or will be completely annoyed shout at you in local and uh, and warp off 
ECM uses a lot of slots, which usually color ships have a lot of. So that's pretty good. Yeah, Lackner, you're very right. ECM ships are usually primary. That's one of the main negative things when flying a Scorpion Caldari battleship. We'll get into that later. You're always primary. But it goes for the other ships as well. Yep, using mid slots is definitely a big down because Caldari tend to use shield tank, which uses up a lot of those mid slots. And if you fit ECM in those, you won't be doing any shield tanking there. It's one of the few reasons why you could armor tank a Caldari ship, which is done sometimes. I haven't done much of it myself, but it's definitely something to try out. Um, making a small cross earlier, I've listed that small cheat sheet, a spreadsheet which tells you all the different slot types that the Caldari ships have. And, well, there you can check out how you can fit an ECM ship with an armor tank or yeah, start up your EFT, your E-fitting tool, and check it out. ECM, final downside of it, it doesn't work as well on ships without a bonus to ECM. So just fitting some to any color ship might not be the best route to take, but we have a lot of ships with ECM bonus, which we'll get to in a bit. All right, moving on to slide number seven, frigates. Ha! One of the EUNI's favorite ship classes, we can get them for free. So fly them and get them blown up whenever you can, is what I say. Kaldari ships, Kaldari frigates have a big list of them. You can find it on page 7. On the further pages, we'll discuss them. So please move on to page 8. If you'd like, you can keep either the syllabus or the cheat sheet ready so you can get a little more view of the different mods. Sorry, I think I fell away there for a sec. I'm back. First, our noob ship, the Ibis. Most starting Kaldari players will have flown in this ship or fly in it when they get blown up. The Ibis, like all the noob ships I've heard recently, are more or less figured out the same. It has a too high, too mid, too low slot layout. It's uh, the Kaldari free ship, so if you're born Kaldari, you can fly it. Otherwise, at most uh, times at PTS, you can buy one if you'd really like. Um, I honestly really don't know why you'd want to, unless you get blown up halfway through a fleet or are flying a, a cool noob ship tournament. Having said that, when you're a complete beginner pilot and strung out for cash, it does have some interesting bonuses to missiles doing kinetic damage, the hybrids, ECM, and shield resist. And especially its ECM bonus of 30% for an utter noob ship is not all that bad. Moving on to slide number 8, the Bantam frigate. Bantam. Thank you for linking it up, Lackner. It's a pretty decent mining and hauling ship. It allows you to carry one drone. Yeah, well, Kardari don't get to get drones in very much. And it has you a bonus of shield transporter. So it's, it's a very decent starting up logi ship, which gives you some options. It's configured with three highs, four mids, two low slots. Gives you a bonus to shield transporters and shield transporter cap use and a big roll bonus of 500% bonus range to shield transporters. So in a small roam fleet comp, this could be a decent starting up logi. It's definitely a cheap ship to fly. You'll get one when you do the Caldari career plan. You'll, they'll set you up with the Bantam. Also, for a very beginning pilot, doing a little mining or hauling in the ship can be a decent idea. If I look at the cheat sheet... It actually it gives you a cargo capacity of 270, which for a starting frigate is all right. So you can do something with that, the Bantam. Next one, Condor. An attack frigate for the Kaldari. Mostly fitted as a missile boat. Condor, four high slots, four mids, two lows. The high slots actually only allow you to fit three weapon turrets, for, uh, three missile launcher turrets or rocket launcher turrets at that. So you have a utility high slot. Utility high slot meaning you can fit something else than a weapon in your high slot, like a newt, a vampire, or any other module that could, you could use. It gives the Condor a pretty uh, wide range of 
abilities to fit it with, of different styles you can fly it with. It has a bonus to light missiles and rockets doing kinetic damage, and also a big reduction to propulsion jamming activation costs. So fitting a point on it is a decent idea, especially because it has a four mid slots. You can tank it up for a shield as well, make it a fast little ship. And you actually do see condors in uh, PvP uh, generally often. Um, of course, its T2 version is, is a little more lovely than that. But yeah, Condor in a small gang can be a pretty good freak to fly if you have your, your fleet comp set to it. It's very close to its cousin, the Kaldari Kestrel. We'll get to that a little later. It's also a missile ship. Next frigate on slide 11, the Griffin, is your ECM E-War frigate. It's a great frigate for ECM flying, it has very cost effective, so it's extremely cheap. It gives you five mid slots you can use for ECM. It has a big ECM bonus, only two highs, two lows. You can fit some launchers on there and a single drone if you'd like. It has a decent tank compared to the other frigates of its class and a very big cargo hold. Of course, most Griffins won't be doing any cargo hauling, but just fit for ECM which it has a huge bonus of 15% to ECM target jammer strength, 10% to target jammer cap need, which is pretty good. Uh, having five mid slots, you'd usually use three to four, probably four for e for ECM, which allows you to fit one more and give you an afterburner or a micro warp drive. And people call it a rainbow fit. I have no idea why they call it a rainbow fit, but hey, it will give you a very fast ECM ship. Can I just quickly interject there? It's called the Rainbow Fit because each of the ECM has a different color if you look at it. Ah, thank you. I did not know that. <laughs> Perfect interjection, and please feel free to do so. And thank you for linking that fit to Romnir. Let me save that myself. Ah, very cool. I did not know about the Rainbow Fit. Thank you very much. Moving on from the excellent Griffin to the Heron. Shy slide number 12, the Heron Exploration Frigate has an increased probe strength as one of its bonuses. Um, it has a fairly large cargo hold to give you some scan strength, so it's an exploration frig, one of the boats that you can easily use to do some exploration, opening up sites as part of a gang there or even solo, although the Heron is usually less often used to actually go into the sites to uh, to explore them yourself or run them yourself. So be most people scan out the sites, save it up in their Heron, and then come back with a more combat fit ship or fly with a couple of pilots and see what you can get. Slide number 13 comes from to one of my favorite Kaldari frigates, the Kestrel. The Kestrel is a missile ship, an attack frigate. It has a little more tank than your Condor. It also has one high slot that you can use extra to fit a launcher turret. The Condor has an equal amount of high slots, but has that utility high, which can't fit a launcher. The Kestrel has four highs, can fit you four launcher turrets, which does you just add more DPS. It also has a bit more tank. Equal amount of mids, four mids, two lows. Yeah, better tank, more gank basically says it all. Uh, when I started flying Kaldari and I, I wanted to fly some PvP, people um, in the uni told me to never fly one, ever. Um, which, I, at first I listened to them. I mean, I'm a new pilot, same as some of you may be, and I thought to take this advice to heart. First time I went into a small gang PvP in uh, some sort of Amar boat, which was uh, advised against my Kestrel, I got blown up by two Kestrels. So then the word was said, and I'm flying Kestrels in small gang uh, or even solo PvP. It's not as good as a T2 version, but the Kestrel is a mighty boat. If you fit it out nicely, it's, uh, it's absolutely lovely. Uh, I love the look of it. It has these sharp hooks. Yeah, I'm perfectly in love with the ship.
The Kestrel, just to give you a little more range, is often used as a long-range ship, fitting the long-range missiles. You can use it for kiting. I've myself found that I find kiting to be uh, a bit more difficult as a pilot, not to fit, but uh, to use, as they say, soft skills, so the skills of flying the actual ship in combat or in a PvP setting, I find kiting a little more difficult. Of course, the Kestrel is a really good ship for level 1 missions, and I've even flown a, a big bunch of... Uh, level 2 missions, uh, now that I can fit my Kestrel a little better, with some more skill points under my belt. No problem, Salura. Thanks that you're recording, and uh, I hope you'll listen to it later. Perhaps if you are recording, you can uh, post the recording later to the forums. It would be uh, much appreciated. Uh, of course, it's okay to stay mumble. No problem at all, and uh, thanks for joining us so far. All right, everyone. That last Caldari frig on page 14 is the Merlin. The Merlin is a very nice Caldari frig. It's one of the first ones you get set up with hybrid turrets, which for beginning pilots may be difficult as you're training up on missiles, but I definitely advise to train up some hybrid turrets when you are serious about flying Caldari. And even if you're not that serious, but you want to try it out, the Merlin is a wonderful ship for a lot of situations. The Merlin, well, just look at it. It looks lovely and odd at the same time. It gives you a good tank. It gives you a great all-round ship. It gives you three highs, four mids, three lows. Three highs are all turret slots or possibly turret slots. It gives you a good tank, about uh, a little better even than the Kestrel. It can be fit as a tackler, and you can make it go really fast. You can do some E-War with it because of those four mids. It's very popular in PvP. I've seen it flow there a lot. And often in small gang engagements, the Merlins are primaried because of their flexibility. You never know what can come out of one of those, but well, when you're fighting a Merlin, you'll definitely get hurt. I've been in a few solos against the Merlin, and it's one of the big reasons for me to just warp off and get out of there, because these ships can either be fit for range, they can be brawlers, they're hard to shoot down. They're pretty decent ships in, in fleets or even solo PvP. So if you're serious or not serious about flying Kaldar, but you want to give it a try, the Merlin is a very, very good place to start, because you can do a lot of different things with the Merlin. Um, actually, I'm not sure if anyone in class right now flies a Merlin or has a Merlin fit. I'll find you one of my Merlin fits and post it. It's by no means a standard, so just take it with a grain of salt. But I'd invite you all right now to post your different Merlin fits, because this ship is so versatile. I think you can learn from every different fit. I'll find mine. Just give me a second. Or apparently I'll be the only one posting Merlin fits. That's all right. <laughs> no problem. If you want to know more about how to fit uh, a Merlin or any other of the Kaldar ships, of course you can always take a look. How do you post fittings to chat? A really good question. Um, if you push Alt-F, you open your fitting window, and down below you have a browse button. If you've saved up one of your fittings, in the browse button you can see the entire list, and you just drag and drop it into the chat channel. Thank you, Nawali and Sils Ghosts. Oh, and Alistair. Excellent. Well, you know what I find? Um, a lot of people ask me, or, or others in chat channels, I want the best fit for this, or give me the best Merlin fit, or the best Drake fit. And, well, it's difficult. I think that you should try to look at some of these fits and make up your own mind. Every pilot's style is different, and is different. And a lot of PvPs are different all of its own. So you need to look at what you want to fly. Yeah, for what skills. Pff, man, <laughs> it's such a... a a hornet's nest, really, to get into the best fit. I'd like much more to give you some uh, handouts to how to start making your fit, learn from anything you can, and make your own perfect fit, man. That's the best thing. 
Oh yeah, the EFT Warrior class. <laughs> I don't know. I, I had a pretty amazing fitting class with uh, um, uh, Joseph North earlier, which is also really good. So yeah, definitely try the EFT or the fitting classes. All right, guys. So that pretty much rounds up our frigates. Thank you for posting your fits. Let's move on to slide 15, destroyers. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with destroyers of the Kaldar race myself. We have two Cormorant and Korax. I posted on the slide. Great firepower, weak defense. That's what cruisers are sometimes called, the glass cannon. They can deal a hell of a lot of damage, especially compared to a frigate, but they get shot down a lot easier. Let's take a look close up to the two destroyer hulls. Slide 16 gives you the Cormorant. The Cormorant allows you to house seven hybrid turrets. That's a hell of a load of damage. You can even fit one launcher turret next to that. Although I've seen a lot of people fit something else in a utility high like a newt or a vampire for some PvP. The Cormorant gives you a double range bonus, so it can be used excellently as a sniper. And it can also be fit as a fairly cheap salvage ship. I mean, this is not no Noctis we're talking about. Excuse me, but if you want to do some salvaging, then the Cormorant will definitely work. Uh, it's a really cheap ship to get your hands on if you're a beginning pilot, because at the end of the career agent for Advanced War, they will give you a Cormorant if you do the Kaldari version. Cormorant has the biggest tank also of the... Uh, sorry, the smallest tank of the two uh, Kaldari destroyers, the Korax, which you can already see some fits in. On slide 17, has a little bit of a bigger tank. The Corex looks absolutely beautiful, like some sort of U-boat from the wars. <laughs> it looks great as, a, as an EVE ship. It has a decent range, even with rockets, which is a good advantage. Yeah, well, tank, light missile courts. Well, I don't know. I've had some decent experience with the rocket versions. I think that destroyers in general, but especially the Corex, is best used in a small gang or a fleet, where it can be really, really effective. You just tend to catch a lot of uh, heck. I mean, if you can get your fight in PvP, where a destroyer fights off a frigate, you might actually be able to take them down fairly easily. But when people see destroyer, either they run or they bring the big guns, which you can't easily tank. Because that Korax gives you the seven high slots, seven launcher slots, and only four mids, which is good compared to another frigate. But for a heavier, more expensive ship, you're so much easier to shoot down. Only two low slots... Well, difficult ship. It is pretty much correct due to its bonus against fast moving targets with its launcher turrets, uh, an anti frigate ship, or even anti drones. Which is a role that I've seen in some fleets already as an anti drone ship. All right, moving on to 18, the cruisers. Kaldari cruisers, there are four of them, and there are some really interesting uh, choices here. On slide 19, the Blackbird is your ECM cruiser. Yeah, it says right there, second point, Kaldari armor tank. It sounds like cursing, or it sounds like the elephant in the china shop. Thank you for the link, like there. Blackbird. A lot of FCs have it on their list high as one of the favorites to join their fleet right after the... Uh, excuse me, what fits that? <laughs> uh, as, a, as a favorite right after Logi, because a lot of FCs love Logi too. So with a Blackbird, you can definitely get your, uh, get your pilot seat secured in most fleets. They'll love you over there. Four highs, six mids, three lows. It's EDM all the way, 15% to your jammer strength, 12.5 optimal range and fall off for your ECM. Uh, as you can see, a bit of a typo in the syllabus. Let me work on that. It's a very long and one of the best optimals. Thank you for the fits, guys. I personally don't have any Blackbird fits, so thank you for bringing those with us and with me. I'll save them myself as well. Excellent, excellent. The Blackbird has some downsides. It has this very low tank, especially because it doesn't shield tank, no armor bonuses. Sure, you can armor tank it, but you only have the three low slots. 
if you want to free up all of those mids for ECMs and perhaps uh, uh, an AB or a micro warp drive. Uh, it's a high priority target. So yeah, that's dangerous too. Uh, yeah, blob ECM for the win. Yeah, that's definitely true. Blinding out the sun with your blackbirds. I think uh, all of us Caldari pilots in uni really need to think about making a blackbird fleet with some uh, some extras to it and see if we can uh, to bring that old shine back and uh, strike the fear into the hearts of our enemies. Next Caldari cruiser, page 20 of your slideshow, the Caracal. The Caracal is an odd-looking ship in the Caldari range. Of course, we have a lot of odd-looking ships in the Caldari fleet. It is a missile boat. It's an attack cruiser. It's very good against frigates because you can fit rapid light missile launcher turrets on it. It also allows you to fit heavy assault missiles or heavy missiles. Again, I've said before, the heavy missiles are sometimes much more useful against larger ship, other cruisers, even larger ships, but they still do some damage to frigates. So during level 2 missions, even the smaller ships, you might be able to take out easy. It's a great level 2 mission runner. I've heard a lot of people say it's one of the most popular level 2 mission runners. Yeah, was it fleet any good, Alyssa? I, I didn't get a chance due to realize... Oh, yeah, game. it was amazing. Didn't do very well. We all got battered because they... I can't remember what they bought out, but they bought out ships that were good at taking down caracals. Yeah, people spies on the forums. What is this run you have been doing? It was a fleet ops with Shadow, and there's another one later on today at 8 p.m., I think. Yeah, Shadu is a very famous FC, and if you have a chance to fly that fleet today, it has indeed part two today, I think 8 Eve time, you're correct. Uh, make sure you're part of that fleet, it's perfect. Check out the forum post on the event calendar uh, to see uh, what goes and, and more information on it. But yeah, Shadu, that's a, a really excellent FC to fly with, a pleasure for everyone, I think. Thank you for the link. Kaldari ships have a pretty good tank in general. The Caracal has an excellent ability to shield tank for PvE or PvP. It's a good sniper, but it can be fit equally as a great brawler. Uh, a heavy assault missile turret fit Caracal will do very well in a brawl in PvP as well. Some disadvantages, people will see you coming a mile away in a Caracal and know usually what you're fit for. So it has a little less of a surprise bonus. People might run from your fights or might be fit, just as you said. In the Shadow fleet, might fit in such a way that they definitely don't want that you don't want to meet them. So fit exactly against your type of ship, which is somewhat of a bummer. But hey, getting blown up is fun too. Yeah, thanks for the fit, Ron there. Excellent stuff. The next uh, Caldari cruiser, the MOA, page 21, is a hybrid turret vessel again. The MOA, it looks like some sort of strange grasshopper with a, a bummed up leg. I'm not sure what it looks like. Um, but I've fallen in love with how it looks, the strangeness of it. I think it's great. It has the five hybrid turret slots, five mids, four lows, uh, same sort of layout as Caracal. It has a very high EHP count for a shield tank, so it can fit a great shield tank. It has decent damage with its blasters. It's a very good shield type brawler. Miss Universe 2009, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, it has very low speed. It's extremely slow, which can get you into some trouble PvP wise for keeping your range and range control in PvP engagements, especially in smaller operations, is very, very important because you can get smaller ships circling you, and especially using turrets, speed, and the control of speed of your enemy is very, very crucial. Again, it has something to do with math, which is evil, so I'm not going to be able to calculate you how exactly turret speed and stuff works, but you want to control the speed of your enemy, make him slow down and get him some range from you, so that you're in your turret optimal range doing most damage. Fit for a sniping roll, which is possible in the MOA. You definitely uh, want to keep that enemy at range. You're very slow, so that's really difficult. As a brawler, excellent ship. You'd want your enemy to come close. Fit your blaster turrets in your slots, and you can do a lot of damage. It has a bonus to these hybrid turret damage, 5% and some shield bonus. Personally, I've been experimenting a little in PvE with the MOA. It's a less popular choice compared to the Caracal, but with its turrets and 
uh, being able to fit a very nice passive tank. You can keep on going mission after mission, no repair, no need to, to cool down or keep it range. Just fly in there and blow stuff up. And sometimes that's a lot of fun if you're used to doing the Kaldari sniping routine, which I do on a lot of missions too. All right, uh, guys. <laughs> I like no, that's, that's a funny comment right there. Um, yeah, a suitcase. <laughs> it's it's your basic um, Samsonite cruiser, right? Yeah. Let's move on to the last of the Kaldari cruisers, the Osprey. It's a Lodgy cruiser. It works great in a chain of ships. Lodgy uh, is uh, logistics cruisers. It's a bit of a strange name I've heard from some military folks. I don't have any military experience, but apparently they uh, they seem to believe the logistics means something else in a military um, standpoint, and I, I, com I completely concur with that. I just really don't know much about it. A shield logistics, that means that your Osprey can give your fleet mates uh, a shield boost or a shield transport. So you can up the shields, even do an energy transfer array. It has that as a roll bonus, which allows you with the Osprey to create a cap chain with other Lodgy ships, meaning that you can enforce each other's capacitor and keep on using your Lodgy shield or other Lodgies to pump up the other ships in your fleet. So yeah, again, as a fleet ship, Osprey, really great. Oh, yeah, thank you, Ismael, for reminding me of what logistics actually meant. <laughs> You're absolutely right, of course. I just English not my native language. Sometimes I struggle with these understandings of things like logistics. But yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Jade, most of the Kaldari cruisers are special. I'm not saying they're ugly. Because I love them in their certain way, but they're special, and the Osprey is not any different from that. So Osprey, yeah, shield ship. I've haven't seen one solo about because of its uh, its Lodgy bonus. It's a great Lodgy ship. People will love you when you fly one in fleet. A lot of Uni FCs love, love, love their Lodgy. Uh, I have seen the Osprey, however, fitted often for small gangs doing uh, low sec exploration missions. Actually, let me see. I think I have a fit for it. You have a sec? There we go. So that's one of those more uses you can put in an Osprey. Is that an exploration one? Oh, you don't do any exploration with it. You're part of an exploration gang. No, you, know, you can't do any exploration with the ship itself, but as part of a small room, small gang for doing Explo, this is one of the fits that I've run into that people are requesting for doing that. And in case you didn't know, it's not really part of this class, but doing explorations in small gangs, small groups, can make you a lot of ISK. Purpose for another class, perhaps, so try to figure out to get to an Exploration 101 class, uh, because, yeah, that can field you a lot of ISK. Moving on with the Caldari ships on slide 23, battle cruisers. We have three, the Drake, the Ferox, and the Naga. And if we move on to slide 24 to the Drake, I'm pretty sure this ship doesn't need much introductions because most people will know exactly what a Drake is all about. A Drake is one of the most famous level 3 mission ships, and I've even heard of people doing some L4s in them. It has a huge tank to fit, and it's a perfect missile boat. It does a very high DPS with its seven slots. Yeah, it's basically the premier, so the, the most used, according to some people, level three mission runners. I see drakes around all the time in fleets, 
I see them flying around too. A lot of people have told me that in PvP, when you see uh, in uh, in low sec, you see a single uh, Drake or in, in null sec even, then it's usually bait. Uh, possibly, I've seen a lot of uh, solo PvP pilots flying Drakes as well. Um, Actually, I've met uh, uh, Azure Skull, I have a very famous PvP pilot, a small gang pilot, uh, a couple of times somewhere in uh, in Losec. We just flew by each other quickly, or I, f I ran away from him, is more likely, and he flew a Drake too. So yeah, judging that people know what your Drake is about, level 3 mission running or baiting because you have a huge tank as part of a fleet or, or some sort of uh, trap, you can do a lot of things with the Drake because people will judge you as being able to do only one or two things if you'd use your ship for something else, like you use it as a solo, a solo engagement ship, can be really exciting. Uh, as most battle cruisers, the Drake can fit a warfare link module, which gives your fleet mates a lot of your leadership bonuses, which is very good. The Drake has that 5% bonus to its shield resists, so it can fit an awesome tank with those 6 mids. It also has a 10% kinetic damage bonus to heavy missiles and heavy assault missiles. And yeah, those kinetics are what you often use in missions. Uh, but yeah, also great for any PvP damage. One more of our beautiful ships on page 25, the Ferox, is uh, a ship that you don't see very often. It has eight highs, five mids, four low slots. Yeah, question mark, very good. It's often seen as a brawler ship when you see it. You see it a lot less than the Drake. Uh, it does somewhat less DPS, I guess you can say, especially because it uses the turrets, only uh, six of its... Wait a minute, did I make a mistake here in my cheat sheet? I might have. The cheat sheet tells you that there are seven high slots in the Ferox, while our lovely syllabus says eight. Let us click it in-game. Give me a second, I might have made an error here. Bear with me, folks. Yeah, it has eight highs. Yeah, I made a boo-boo in my cheat sheet. Thank you, Spanky. Of those eight highs, you can just fit six as uh, hybrid turrets and five as missiles. So yeah, doing different types of damage with different types of turrets uh, is an option, although I've often heard that you should stick to one type of weapon turret, which allows you in the Ferrex to fit some uh, different uh, modules, some utility high modules. You know, it's uh, been since then. Go again? It's only got seven turrets now. Ah, okay, so my cheat sheet is actually correct since the it's retribution. It's out of date, yeah. Okay, well, the, thank you. Uh, the, the actual original one was out of date. Ah, thank you very much. I'll have to change that after class. Thank you. The Ferox, uh, as it states on the slide, is an underrated PvP ship. It can make a very good brawler with some of the shoot resists and a bonus to optimal damage, fitting blasters to optimal range, sorry, not optimal damage. Fitting blasters to it, you can really have some extra range in doing that, uh, that up close and personal DPS and hit your opponent really hard. Because the Ferox is often not seen, uh, in PvP, a less popular ship than the Drake, you can really uh, do some interesting stuff with that. Uh, let me link you up an article. Or apparently I will not be linking you up an article. Give me a sec. I didn't link you an article, I did link you a uh, site, the Eve Altruist, the, the Azure Skull site. I forgot the exact link for the exact article, but just try to uh, search on that site for Ferox and it will give you a great article that Azure Skull wrote on using a Ferox in PvP. Uh, Ismail, yeah, it's a very capable PvE ship as well, and a little less often seen, but yeah, a great ship altogether. Very flexible. Check out that Eve Altruist site and, and search for the Ferox. Altruist has some great, great information there. 
Yeah, T2 blasters. I think the Fergs will make an awesome ship, and one of the main advantages in PvP, people will not see you coming. They see the Drake coming, and they'll budge, but the Fergs, people might actually think they can take you down, and they don't stand a chance. Again, Ferox can also fit those for link modules for your fleet operations, just so that you know. All right, on to slide 26, the Naga, the last of the Kaldaru battle cruisers, uh, is an awesome looking uh, half of a gun or paper bag. I'm not sure what it looks like, but it's an awesome long ship. Uh, it fits battleship sized weapons which can make for an awesome bang for your buck. Hybrid turrets are all the way for the Naga, 863 slots. Great as a sniper uh, because you get uh, the optimal range bonus of 10% for your large hybrid turrets or your battleship-sized turrets. Yeah, it's a smaller class ship fitting larger weapons. Of course, that has a price. It has a fairly weak tank. It's a, yeah, a glass cannon, maybe, I don't know, I've seen people fit a tank on their Naga, but usually I've seen them, um, Naga fits, well, let me take a look for you, I don't think I have one, but let me take a look. Um, I see the Naga in fleet compositions often, or even in groups of about 10 of them. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk, I haven't seen that myself, of Null, uh, Sovereign Null Sec uh, gangs, where people just fly Nagas and blow stuff up. Uh, like no tomorrow. There's a cheap way in which you can fit a lot of battleship damage. So that's, yeah, that's fairly good. One of the great things about the Naga 2 in its role is that it's not incredibly slow. For a battle cruiser. Well, I've seen Nagas in space, even just last night, uh, we, I saw a couple of them, but yeah, you, you often see them uh, when you're on a fleet, uh, usually a little more in null, uh, if you can zero zero space, but yeah, you can see them in gangs uh, often. The last of the ship classes we'll be discussing today, battleships. Starting on page 27, Kaldari battleships, the Raven, the Roke, and the Scorpion. Page 28, the Raven is one of the most famous PvE ships. It is a level 4 mission runner of choice, and many, many people fly it. Uh, the normal Raven one, or even the Navy Raven, which is the T2 Raven, very, very popular ships for PvE. For some reason, people tend to want to gank. Anyone that flies a Raven for missions, at least some people do, some of those pirates or other low and null sec dwellers, uh, seem to be griefing oftenly about people flying ravens getting blown up because they're PvE fits. You don't see it often in PvP, at least I haven't seen much of them. Of course, some people make very smart use of that and try to lure you in uh, to that little trap, thinking that this is probably one of those PvE fit ravens while well, they can fit it uh, PvP. And yeah, it's an awesome ship with uh, some very good potentials as a missile launcher ship. It uh, bonuses apply, by the way, to every damage type. So for PvE, that's perfect if you want to switch over your damage. Most Kaldari missile ships do only a bonus to kinetic damage. This goes you a bonus to all damage types all round. Yeah. Um, it's missile types, cruise missiles and torpedoes. The cruise missile fits on uh, the Raven is a little less popular because of the longer traveling times. Torpedoes are just a bit faster, and well, by the time you can fly a Raven properly, you'll have the skills to fit it, I'm sure, but we'll talk about skills that uh, and that a little bit further on. But that's one of the reasons why you don't see cruise missiles used as much in PvP, because they take that longer time to do damage. Your target might be gone by then, and uh, yeah, you just wasted your missiles and uh, perhaps even be a sitting duck in the meanwhile. Second Kaldari battleship, the Roke. 
Great looking ship, again the barrel of a gun to me. It's a, one of those impressive sniper ships that can also be an effective brawler. I haven't had much experience flying a rogue myself. I've only taken one out a couple of times. But yeah, great, great, great as a sniper. Those large hybrid turrets uh, fit with rogue guns can do an awesome amount of range. And uh, I've even heard of people picking uh, stuff off, uh, sitting at the 100 kilometers off from a gate and picking people off there, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the rogue, though, has some disadvantages. It's incredibly slow, so you don't want to start shooting stuff that might come jumping at you. Uh, pick your targets carefully and make sure you have an out somewhere. Burning Wicked, a question, which is better for PvE, the rogue? Or the Mega, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you mean the Megathron? Oh, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, Rogue Longer Range, I'm not sure if anyone is better. It really picks up your style of PvE. Um, sniping, the Rogue. Definitely the Rogue. You want to sit at long range and take those big targets out? you want to use that rogue. If you want to get more close and personal, or you're having trouble uh, navigating through space, which is something I often have, I'd like something with that little more uh, tank, I guess. Yeah, if it manages. I mean, you have a long time to shoot at anything coming towards you, so that's good. I'm not sure. I don't have much experience in the Megathron, so I couldn't answer your question for you. If you want, I can direct you to someone who can, so just stick around after class, and I can direct you to someone who flies both. Another question, Bernie McKid, can a blaster or a rogue work? Oh, yeah. It definitely can. I've seen um, some people talk about, <laughs> I haven't seen one in person, talk about uh, uh, a brawl or rogue fit. But uh, that can definitely work. You can easily swap your ammo types. So, yeah. I have often heard people, and it's also in the syllabus, compare Rogue to Galente battleships. I mean, being extremely slow, but still. Well, Jade, you need to fill me in on how I can fly it at 1,000 uh, meters per second uh, for the trade-offs. You definitely have to fill me in on that uh, someday. I'm really interested on it. He's talking about the Mega. Oh, sorry. Blast. <laughs> Only Kaldari ships, people. All right, let's 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 move on to uh, page 30 of our slideshow, the Scorpion. Scorpion is the premier ECM battleship. Um, as a result, it's great at E-War, great at ECM. Uh, it does very weak damage, doesn't do you much there. It's usually armor tank to keep those ECM slots open. and usually has a bit of weaker tank because of it. Um, yeah, it's, I've heard people say, always primary in any fleet. Um, for that reason, it can be used as bait. Sit a scorpion out there, people will jump it and make pretty mincemeat of it, and then you can jump in with your fleet. Yeah, the only ECM battleship. Oh, then it's Premier right there. Premier is like the first, yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, scorpion. Often seen in fleets, I don't know. I think that the Scorpion looks really cool, so I'm actually saving my money and my training skills to go for a T2 version of it, the Rattlesnake, which is a, a sort of a Galente Caldari crossover. I know that's blasphemy, but still, if you want to look at the Rattlesnake, if you do a lot of PvE and want something to work towards for the future, could somebody link up the Rattlesnake in, in the chat? would be great. Thank you. Perfect. Just if, like me, you love that Scorpion look, but you don't know how to fit an ECM ship into your PvEing or whatnot. Thanks, Lechner. Great. Yeah, that's going to be my next the Rattlesnake. Uh, that looks beautiful. And apparently it's an awesome, awesome, awesome level 4 mission ship. Rounding off with the Kaldari ships, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the last two, the Kaldari Industrials, page 31, the Badger, page, and, sorry, and page 32, the Badger Mark II. Industrial ships of the Kaldari aren't as popular as most of the other race ships because they have 
less of a hauling capacity than, for instance, bronze. Um, having said that, they give you a lot of options for fitting. Both Badger types give you a, quite a large range of mid slots. The Badger, uh, just a normal Badger, gives you one high, four mids, two lows. The Badger Mark II gives you two highs, six mids, and three lows. So it can actually tank. Yeah, it, it's possible. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about using Badger Mark II's as bait. Um, Sadly, I'm afraid that this might be a practice that's been used for years in EVE, and many people won't fall for it. Yeah, Battle Badgers. I've even seen a fleet of Battle Badgers once pass me by. Uh, that's pretty awesome. You can fit them and uh, do a lot of fun. Yeah, I've never been in one in uni, but I really want to fly a Battle Badger fleet. Perhaps we can set something up. It sounds completely interesting. Um, to see what you can do in that. Uh, you can get a Badger in your starting mission careers. If you do, I think, the distribution missions, uh, you can get, or is that business? Sorry, business missions. Uh, you can get one for free. And that Mark II isn't too expensive and too difficult to train up for. Yeah, I've seen, I've been in one of those, uh, battle venture, uh, fleet thingies before. That's a lot of fun too. All right, folks, before we move on to the last slide, let us talk a little about skills for Kaldari ships. Ah, cool, that Rattler fit. Thank you very much. We've talked about all these different ship types, and things that stick out there are uh, what many people often say, Kaldari ships for a beginning pilot are much more difficult to fit than other races. I'm not sure I completely agree, but yeah, they're a little more difficult to fit. Let's find out why. Um, ship command skills, I think you all know those, Kaldari Frigate, Kaldari Cruiser, Kaldari Battleship, Kaldari Industrial, your ship command skills to be able to fly these ships. Destroyers and battle cruisers are still uh, around the race skills, so if you want to fly a destroyer, you have one skill for the races, pay attention. Come June, the new expansion is coming up, and this is going to change. You can find beautiful articles on it on the forums. I won't go into detail, but everyone advises me to train up destroyers and battle cruisers up to a high level, so you don't have to do it for all the different races after the summer patch somewhere in June. Check out the forums. There's a lot of information on there, but those are the skills you need to fly any of these beautiful Kaldari ships. Yeah, thanks, Hot Monkey. Great link there. That's about that uh, change for the summer. The fitting skills. Basic, basic fitting skills are engineering, electronics, weapon upgrades, and advanced weapon upgrades. Engineering and electronics are your basic fitting skills, giving you a 5% bonus to either power grid for engineering and CPU for electronics. They're relatively Easy to train skills, only 1x time uh, for training them up. And I advise any beginning pilot to start training those up. I've got both on five, and it really helps you with fitting Kaldari ships. When I had them only down to three or four, I had much more difficulty, especially with power grid for engineering. So that's, that's very much advised to start training those up because it helps you a lot. Uh, weapon upgrades, handy skill, especially if you want to fit those damage mods for your hybrid turrets or your uh, missile turrets, and you need it at level 4 to fit yourself T2 damage mods. And fitting T2 for anything in your ship is really, really handy. So get that weapon upgrades up to 4 uh, as one of your priorities, I'd say. Capacitor, I found to be a little less of a problem for Kaldari because most of our missile weapons don't use much cap. Um, and I'm not generally afraid of flying with uh, an unstable cap in most uh, situations. But hey, um, having some of these skills are generally very interesting. Energy system operations, a cheap skill, allows you to bump up your cap recharge time by 5% per level. Energy management, energy grid upgrades and energy emission systems, especially energy management is a very handy one to me. 5% bonus to your cap capacity per skill level. The other two, power grid upgrades and energy emission systems, or sorry, energy grid upgrades and energy emission systems allow you to fit things easier because they reduce your CPU need or cap need for certain modules, so, or certain weapon modules. So, Check out 
uh, which one of those you need, but don't just train them blindly because you might not be needing energy grid upgrades and energy emission systems as much as some of the more general ones. Navigation skills. If you'd like a list of this, by the way, check out the link to the syllabus. That's a great way to find this list that we're talking through. And I'm just going to give you some, some heads up in there. Navigation skills, yeah. More agility, faster flying, use of your afterburners and micro warp drives. What's an important one to start out with? Quick afterburner. Cheap skill to pick up and to learn. You get one from your starting careers. If you have it on four, you can start fitting those type twos. Check out what other skills you need. Fuel conservation, high speed maneuvering. Evasive maneuvering, yeah, there's some very interesting ones there. And train up that navigation skill. Navigation allows you through every ship to fly with a higher velocity and gives you an edge, especially in PvP. Missile skills, there's a big list right in the syllabus. Won't be going into it much. Um, what I found to be uh, disturbing is I started out flying my Kaldari ships and I wanted to get to a larger class of ship quick. So I trained the light missiles and then the medium missiles and then the larger ones. And, and I have all of those skills at two or three and I wasn't able to fit any T2 weapons. Um, it's requested in fleets quite often and it helps you a lot in any PVP to be able to fit type 2 weapons. So you might want to think of flying that frigate a little longer, training up those light missile skills to 5 so you can fit that tech 2 weapon and it gives you a lot more punch than even some T1 fitted cruiser. So think about that. That's something that I made a mistake in and I'm rectifying it now but I really love to be able to fit those T2 weapons and I'm not there yet. Gunnery, basically a bit the same as missile but for our hybrid turrets, check out that list. Again, um, the same thing goes for investing in training up those light turrets up to five and then getting on more if you want to fit T2. Shield tank skills. Shield operation and shield management are your primaries there to get that big recharge and shield capacity up. If your shield capacity increases using your shield management skill, your recharge time also become, uh, not your time, your recharge rate also becomes a little higher because your tank is bigger. So look into that. Uh, tactical shield manipulation allows you to fit, um, where am I going? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, fills you these hardeners, like the adaptive invulnerability field, a very, very handy buffer tank mod for any Kaldari ship. I feel it on a lot of my uh, PvP fits, but PvE also on a MOA or a Caracal, it's a wonderful mod to use. If you want to use the Tech 2, train up Tactical Shield Manipulation to 4. So that's, that's doable, I think. That's not too long of a train time. In the syllabus, it says something about drone skills, and Kaldari can use some drones, but not very much of them. Um, sure, our Osprey and the battle cruiser battleships can field some drones, but not too much. So I have some drone skills trained up because it gives you that extra DPS and later for PVE or other re reasons can give you a lot of more fluidity in the different drone types. I'm not a drone man myself. If you're going to cross train to Galente, perhaps more interesting in drones, the list is in the syllabus. Check them out. Thanks, Lechner. You, you already know I was never around when I did math, right? Math is evil. Only train to four, never train to five. That's really good advice. I'm going to make that part of the syllabus, I think. That's a very good idea. Thank you. I didn't know. It actually works out. There was a big forum thread on it. They did the maths, and it works out that if you train it to four, you get more effective hit points because some bleeds through into your armor, and your shield stays up longer. Wow, that's amazing. Good to know. Do you know where that is? It still on our forums, the link? It's only a few hundred, but it saves you like 25 days training time. And those days training are extremely valuable. Well, thanks, Lagnir, for adding that for us. That's great stuff. Other useful skills that aren't in the skill list so far? Mechanic. Always good stuff to get your structure hit points up. So extra hit points always good for any tank. Uh, long range targeting together with your normal targeting skill, a bonus to your targeting range per level, very handy. Also for PVE uses, especially I like to have a very high targeting skill and uh, after that a, um, 
a multitasking skill to be able to target a lot of enemies so I can use my uh, big amount of high mods to shoot them all, shoot at them all at once. But that's just the way I like to do PvE. No, because no ship has more ability to to uh, target more mods. Ishmael, is that what you're is that what you're saying? Because uh, please explain. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So multitasking is only useful up to three because most ships or any ships can't uh, target more unless you fit the auto targeters. Yeah. Well, see, difficult. So there might be a reason to train past multitasking free. But yeah, I get your point. Thank you. All right, class, this would take us to our last slide, Q&A. Actually, I think I have a question from the beginning still open. Give me a sec. Can someone help me out? Somebody in the beginning asked a PvP question. Can you restate that question, please? Yeah, it was, what was your favorite PvP fit? My favorite PvP fit? Poor, damn, difficult. Let me see if I can link it for you. My favorite PvP fit that I'm flying a lot right now is my Kestrel fit I just linked up. And I'm having some experience with flying that around. And I really, really enjoy that. It's uh, my first steps into doing some uh, T2 mods. So I got my medium shield extender up. I use the adaptive info field. Uh, I use burners instead of micro warps because I find that I just blow past targets too quickly otherwise. Um, yeah, what you could up to do this fit is fit a damage control tool on it and maybe see if you uh, want to do something else with those shield rigs. But I really enjoy those uh, small screen reinforcer shield rigs to build up my tank. And I've had a lot of fun with this fit. Uh, and uh, it's the only uh, uh, frigate fit that I've flown in PvP with people running away from me. And that gives me a great feeling of accomplishment. So guys, do you have any other questions on Kaldari ships so far on this class? While you think of a question, I just want to add something small. I'm uh, uh, doing a lot of solo PvP. I've picked up that School of Yard experiment that some guys from the Tuskers have set up. They've uh, not really canceled it, but they've postponed it for now. So uh, it's not really going on, but I'm still doing it. Uh, Katu, any benefits to rockets over missiles? Uh, rockets do more damage but have a shorter range. Missiles, longer damage, uh, sorry, longer range, less damage. Um, I use missiles often when I want to get up close and personal, uh, which can be a lot of fun uh, for a PvP fit. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you want to keep your range and just shoot at things from a distance. My PvP fit has rockets. I like to get up close and personal, burn in there, warp the things at zero, and, and uh, have it off. But yeah, rocket over missile, torpedo cruise, every missile type has this, uh, is like heavy assault, heavy missile, you know, blaster rails, short range, big DPS, long range, smaller DPS. That's basically the, 
the thing uh, cut to. Ismail uh, asks, any thoughts on missile selection or damage types for PvP? Uh, oh yeah, I definitely have some um, uh, some thoughts on that. Um, during your PvE missions, you'd select the, the type of damage uh, you do for any uh, uh, any mission using Eve Survival or whatnot site. Um, I find that in PvP, most often than not, people have uh, a somewhat weaker tank for explosive damage. I'm not always sure what it is. It has something to do with the damage control, and especially against shield tank chips. Explosive damage seems to be uh, slightly less buffer tanked, so that will be my way to go. I try to lean away from uh, EM or from thermal damage, because that seems to be tanked most, so kinetic. Uh, Mjolnir missiles, or perhaps fitting um, a missile type against explosive. Yeah. But, oh, Burning Wicked has a good point on that. Amar ships have thermal holes, especially against Amar logistics. Yeah, well, certainly do. It depends on what you're flying against. Against shield tanked, I think you should go towards the explosive, as they most have a hole in there. I take some. Uh, I take at least two different kinds with me. Usually, the Mjolnirs and the Scorch missiles or rockets. I take with me. I try to always fit the, the Navy uh, ammunition. More expensive, but a lot more damage. And the fights are over quick, so don't load up your base too uh, much with uh, with those weapon types. Another good point, uh, Lagnir too. Yeah, thank you for that, for ending that. Uh, Katu, question. Is it possible to outrun a missile, not including warping away? Uh, Paul Winery asks, uh, answers yes. Uh, yeah, it is possible. Uh, I've seen it done, but your ship needs to be fast. Um, Dremiel, one of the fastest ships in the game, I, it can probably do it. Uh, ships fit for speed can probably do it, like Inti's interceptor ships, or uh, some of the T2 uh, frigates that they have out there uh, can probably outrun you. Uh, on smaller ships, that might be uh, a problem. That's why often you fit your uh, PvP ship um, with some sort of either a stasis web or a point, so that they might not either warp off on you with points, slow you down if you're on short range. Uh, but that's yeah, that's a problem with a long range engagement. If you're kiting someone, they might run off, and your missiles might not do damage. That's definitely one of the lesser parts there. I've uh, had to uh, fight sometimes against uh, um, small gangs of, of Kestrel fit uh, outfits trying to get after me and uh, and snipe me down. And yeah, I haven't outrun any of them yet, so it's not easy to outrun missiles, but it's possible. Uh, question based mail. Any reason to train FOF or Defender missiles? Uh, I really love the FOF missiles because they uh, make sure that you can still hit targets when you're jammed, which is really great. Um, especially if you know that you'll be flying uh, like ECM or E-War. Um, so yeah, sometimes stock up on these and bring them. Try them out. See how they work for you. Defender missiles? I'm not sure. My experiences with them are really bad. Uh, they take out some of the DPS against you, but definitely not all. And, uh, well, so, I've not been too familiar with them. Does anyone here in class have experience with those? With Defender missiles? So please speak up. Yeah, they're crap. <laughs> My experience. Now, apparently they all just target one, which doesn't really do anything for you. They've been sort of broken since the um, modules can be stacked. Grouped, you know, when you group your missiles together, defenders haven't really responded very well to that. Ah, I see. Thank you, Bobby. Good to add that. Thank you. So you don't generally see those in use very often. I'm getting a five-minute server warning, folks. Uh, any last questions, please post them in chat now or speak up in Mumble if you like. All right, then that will be 
it for today. Thank you very much for joining me in the Kaldari Ships 101 class. I've learned a bunch today, which was really great for me. I hope you've learned something too. Thank you very much. If you'd like to uh, comment me on my class, if you thought it was good, if you thought it was uh, utter crap, please comment to me in the forum post or send me an email if you'd like. Um, in the good uh, gist of what Neville Smith usually does, you could also send me a one isk. Um, if you click my name, I'll exit. You can send me one isk plus a short comment if you liked. Uh, yeah, I learned a lot too. Thank you all for joining. And I'll be uh, trying to set up a uh, Kaldari Ships 102 class with the T2 ships sometime in the nearby future. So I hope to see you again there. Fly safe and enjoy your day. Good night. Thanks for the class. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for class. See you around.